Genes, DNA, and chromosome. Genes are carried in the thread-like structures in nucleus of cells called chromosome. Chromosome is made up of deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, and proteins. However, only the DNA is genetic material. DNA molecules are large and complex. They carry the genetic code that determines the characteristic of a living organism. DNA supplies the information necessary for the cells to reproduce. It is also responsible for determining the traits of a person. DNA often contains codes for diseases that are hereditary, something that can be passed down from the parent to the child. According to Watson Creek model of DNA, the structure of DNA resembles a twisted ladder known as a double helix formation. This is how it looks like if you're going to take a look over here. DNA is made up of molecules called nucleotides. Each nucleotide contains a phosphate group, a sugar group, and a nitrogen base. The four types of nitrogen bases are adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. The order of these bases is what determines the DNA's instructions or genetic code. This is another picture of the DNA, of how it looks like. You can observe that nitrogen bases are attached to the particular pair, specific pair. For example, the adenine is attached next to a thymine, and the guanine is also attached next to a cytosine. Remember that in pairing this nitrogen bases, is specifically attached to a specific type of nitrogen let's say for example adenine adenine can only be attached next to a thymine not that a an adenine can be attached to a guanine okay while the guanine is also attached to the cytosine on the sides supporting these bases pairs are this what we call sugar phosphate backbone Okay, which we can find it here, this following. This is the sugar phosphate backbone. While the nitrogen bases are the one in the middle. Heredity information is stored in DNA. Genes is a length of DNA on chromosome and it is a unit factor of heredity. So on the left, this is how the DNA looks like with a sugar phosphate backbone on the side okay and the one in the middle as the nitrogen bases of course once it, it's twisted it will look like this twisted and compact together inside the chromosome let's proceed to the human chromosome uh, as what we know we have 46 chromosomes in all our cells except the gamete we inherit 23 chromosomes from our mother and another 23 from father. So we have two sets of 23 chromosomes or 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. So what is a homologous chromosome? The chromosomes that are similar in size and shape can be paired. A pair of similar chromosomes is called homologous chromosome. So as what you can observe, we have one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, and the last one are the chromosome, the twenty-three pairs of chromosome in the human. Remember this, as what we have said that we inherit twenty-three from the mother and twenty-three from the father. So this 23 from each side of your parents are being paired and once they are compatible, they will make up the 23 pairs during the fertilization process. Let's take a look at the inheritance of traits. The genes that control that trait have two forms called alleles. 
Each trait in a human, such as a type of hair, is controlled by two alleles. These two alleles are called dominant allele and recessive allele. So what are dominant and recessive allele? Let's start first with the dominant. Dominant means that this allele will be expressed if it is present. Meaning, once this allele is present in your genotype or in your genome, it will always be expressed in you physically, which is always be represented by a capital letter. Recessive allele means that this allele will only be expressed in absence of a dominant trait, represented by a lowercase letter. So let's say, for example, let's talk about one type of characteristic. So in this case here, uh, height, right? So we indicate this allele. We have two alleles. Capital letter and lowercase. See? So, this is to show you that this particular allele is both possessed by the child or the offspring. So, from the picture, gene that controls the height of a plant is made up of two different alleles one for tall. This one here, capital letter. So we will say that this being tall, the height, if the height is tall, capital letter, it's dominant. And one allele, which is lowercase, of course, if it's not tall, then it's going to be short. So in this case, once the dominant allele is present, that means that is the one that will be shown or expressed physically during meiosis the chromosome pairs are separated leaving only one allele of each trait in each gamete each offspring received one allele of a pair of genes from each parent still not clear okay let's work on this one example to make everything clear Let's just answer the question in this particular example. Let's say we have a daughter who is a curly hair. Now the question is this, how come the daughter has a curly hair? So let's talk about the alleles representing these particular traits being a curly hair and a straight hair. We know that the mother is curly. That is why we represented it with le capital letter C. Well, the father is also having an allele for the hair, which is small letter C or lowercase c. Now, remember that when it is written in capital letter, it must be a dominant. In this case, the mother possesses a dominant curly hair represented by the two capital letter Cs. The father, on the other hand, has this recessive straight hair which is represented by double lowercase c during meiosis the chromosome pairs are separated leaving only one allele for each trait and these alleles are carried out by the gamut of which each alleles from the parents will be paired up in order to form the set of pairs of alleles forming the physical traits to be inherited by the daughter. In this case, the father has contributed an allele of recessive straight hair, while the mother has also donated or shared one allele of dominant curly hair. Now, These two alleles are now paired up, forming the physical traits now possessed by the daughter. So the daughter now possesses the allele representing her hair 
of capital letter C and lowercase c. So since the daughter has, although heterozygous, but still possess a dominant allele of curly hair, then it is also expressed in her physical traits having a curly hair by nature. Inheritance of traits, genotype, and phenotype. So what is genotype? Genotype gives us the idea that it describes the genetic makeup of all the genes of an individual. So remember the alleles that you receive from your mother and your father. Of course, they are represented by a capital letter or a lower case letter, right? Meaning the dominant or recessive. So whatever, whatever the characteristic of it will create this what we call genotype. Phenotype. Phenotype is the upward appearance of an individual. If an organism with two alleles that are exactly the same is called homozygote. If the organism has two different alleles for the same trait, the organism is called heterozygote. Genotype refers to the alleles that an individual receives during fertilization for a particular trait. Phenotype. Phenotype refers to the physical appearance of an individual resulting from the expression of genotype. So again, when we say genotype, that is the code behind the phenotype. Take note, the phenotype is only the physical appearance or the up outward appearance that is being expressed resulting from the genotype. So let us now proceed or focus on our example in order to fully understand the concept of genotypes and phenotypes. Let's take a look on the pictures of these three mice. So when we say genotypes, we are talking about the alleles received by the mouse from the parents. Uh, can you remember the previous topic about the alleles that form the physical trait of a certain organism, while the phenotype represents the outward physical appearance as an expression of the genotypes. So let's say, for example, if we are talking here about black fur, that is just one allele, one physical trait, the black fur possessed by an organism, in this case, a mouse. So the question is, for the first mouse, how come it has a genotype of capital letter B and capital letter B? We know from our previous topic that this allele were once because the mouse has been or is a result of pairing between the two alleles coming from the parents. In this case, the parents are both black fur. And by the way, the black fur is a dominant. That's why it's written in capital letter B. Of course, if we have um, a non-black, it should be represented by A, lowercase b. Since we have a genotype of two dominant allele, then we can say that the first mouse is what we call homozygous dominant because he both possess dominant alleles coming from the parents, which is black. Now, the second one, although it's black, but we can observe that the genotype of this mouse, it has a genotype of capital letter B and a lowercase b. So meaning, this mouse is not a uniform genotype. It is a combination of a non-black or a brown fur mouse and a black fur mouse. But since the black is dominant, that is why it is the one that is being expressed out as a physical trait for the mouse. The phenotype of the mouse is black because, of course, the dominant 
will always be expressed. Since the mouse is a hybrid, hybrid means a combination of a dominant and a recessive allele, then we can say that the second mouse is a heterozygous. Yes, a combination of a dominant and a recessive allele. Now, the last mouse, we can observe that it has a brown fur. The phenotype is brown fur. And also, the genotype is represented by a lowercase b and a lowercase b. Where did it get? Of course, from the parents, which is a brown fur mouse and another brown fur mouse. So the third mouse is a product or a result of two both non-black mouse or parents. And since it possesses a genotype of both lowercase b or recessive allele, then we can say that the third mouse is a homozygous recessive. And this time, we are going to go over with these reviewed questions um, in order to refresh our understanding with the previous topic that we have discussed. Okay, so let's go over with the questions. And let's start. Question number one. What does DNA stand for? Answer, the oxyribonucleic acid. Question number two. What is the relationship between chromosome and DNA. Answer. Chromosome is made up of DNA. Question number three. Where are chromosomes found? Answer. Chromosomes found in the nucleus of a cell. So before we end with our discussion and moving on to the next topic, we would like you to work on this assignment number two, uh, which is the monster genetics. And we have provided you with the PDF file on this worksheet. So we are expecting you to finish all the questions and be able to give the answers before we start with our next lesson. Hopefully, you'll be able to do all the questions as listed down below and have fun doing it in your home. Thank you.